Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space, we would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation and get you back up and running the way you should be. Call Versatile Networks today at 405-217-0267 or visit versatilenetworks.com for more information. Live. Find out more at squirtle.com slash dream. Score that perfect design at Touchdown Graphics just north of the curve in Pond Creek. They offer screen printing and embroidery on t-shirts, shorts, hoodies, and more. Show your spirit for your school, team, club, or special event with a custom design from Touchdown Graphics. Call 580-532-4579 or see them online at touchdowngraphics.com. Touchdown Graphics. It's good. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. When it comes to cellular service, why pay for data you don't use? Pioneer Cellular offers a variety of plans designed to give you the lowest prices on the data you and the others on your plan really need. That's why people all over are switching to Pioneer. Pioneer Cellular can save you money on your family plan, no matter how you define family. Do the math. Visit our website at gopioneer.com, call us at 800-641-2732, or stop by a local Pioneer store. Find out how much we can save you. Great Plains Land Company came together out of a desire to return to what a land company should be, a client-centered organization as passionate about the land as you are. Land is not something we deal with from 8 to 5. Land is truly our passion. Whether you are looking for your dream property or listing a property, you need an experienced land specialist working for you. We invite you to call our Great Plains Land Team today at 405-761-4808. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. 
Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space, we would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation and get you back up and running the way you should be. Call Versatile Networks today at 405 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ben Welch here on the call, the voice of the Frontier Mustangs on Sportle and 1047 The Bull. Uh, I'm also the voice of the Tonkawal Buccaneer football squad there during football season. Joining me for this championship matchup in the 49th annual Glencoe Invitational is Mr. Charles Sanders. You guys there at Frontier know him well. Thank you, Ben. Looks uh, like we're probably going to have us a pretty good game. We have uh, two very good uh, outside shooting teams. Yeah, I know the, the Lady Panthers took one on the chin earlier in the year against the Must Lady Mustangs. So uh, they got retribution and the, the win the tournament uh, that they sponsored would be huge as well. And an upset as the Mustangs, Lady Mustangs, they if they uh, claim that gold ball or gold plaque, whatever it is here, will be the fourth year in a row that they've won the tournament championship. So something to watch out for for the Lady Mustangs. We're going to do some starting lineups here. We are set for this first place, this championship game here in the 49th Annual Glencoe Invitational. Championship round. Apparently, there's going to be three referees on the on the floor. Uh, I've not seen that all tournament long. You know, that's that's a nice thing to have is the three three refs because you know it's, it's an extra set of eyes to have for some fouls or maybe a jump ball or something. But as as a scorekeeper at Frontier, it's a pain in the rear because sometimes they post up right in front of you and you can't see what's going on. Yeah. And so you have to look around and say, Hey, who just scored the bucket? Or did that go in, or was it just a foul, or was it just out of bounds, you know? So. All right, the Lady lady Mustangs were in their home white, but they're the away team here for this championship game since the Panthers are technically at home, so they're going to let them be home on the scoreboard. Your starting lineup for the Frontier Lady Mustangs. Number one, Olivia Littlecook, the sophomore. Number 20, Anias, Aeneas Bible. How do you, that, that, did I say that right? Anias Bible. Anias, I had it right the first time. The sophomore, number 14, or excuse me, not number 14, she's number 20, is Bible. 34, Grant, the junior in the starting lineup. Number 23, Molina, the sophomore. And number 22, Allison Boone, rounding out the starting five. That means the... 5'10 freshman Diane Falfa will come in off the bench. Her coming in, coming in off the bench is uh, excellent for Coach Bird and the Lady Mustangs. And you know, it, she got a lot of start time there while uh, Allison was gone. So she's got some experience under her wings there. Yeah, I was quite impressed. I believe it was the, the second game that we called there on the radio there at Frontier. Um, with her performance uh, on the block, and she's just really, really long, really long arms, being a 5'10 freshman, uh, and that, that's just tremendous advantage. And, you know, that that's what's nice about this Frontier Lady Mustang squad. You're coming off the bench with 5'9", 5'10", 6 foot, and, and long, long reach. So... Uh, new development, Molina will be wearing a mask to start this game. Uh, their Frontier girls wear masks in warm-up, but they have not worn it carried in the game. Let's see how that affects Molina or how long she wears it. 
Lady Mustangs force a quick turnover right out of the gate. Bible will be doing inbounding for Frontier. Got Glen Cohen a 2 2 1 full court press. A lot of. I've never seen more zone defense and more presses than this tournament, like, in my life. Lady Mustangs do a great job of breaking it, getting the ball. Now they're going to try to set up an offense to attack this 2 3 zone. Bible has it in the corner. Now swing it back outside to Little Cook. Little Cook nearly does turn the ball over. Good cut through by number 21 for Glencoe. Outside. That is 21, little, Riba. Little hard on the shot. Ball out of bounds off of Boone. She tied her up as she was trying to shoot it and kind of just tipped it out of bounds. Bo Boone's really feisty. She's really active there on that low block on the defensive side, and she's great on the offensive glass as well for the yeah. Lady Mustangs. She has a lot of uh, heart and, and, and grit, like you said. Little Cook gets the steal for the Lady Mustangs, and they bring the ball back down the court. They're going to set up an offense. Molina fires the three. Mask no effect there. Nothing As but the net. the sophomore sensation, Molina scores the first bucket for the Frontier Lady Mustangs. Glencoe now going to try to set up an offense. The Lady Panthers trying to penetrate the defense for the Lady Mustangs. Mustangs are in a man-to-man uh, -man defense here. Good Grant pressure. With the pressure there. Green has possession. He's guarded by Boone. Good tip right there by a nice Bible to, to slow that down. Lady Mustangs doing an excellent job there on that switch. Lady Panthers need a little help. Lady Mustangs defense has been active. I think they're even more active on the defensive side than what the men are. There's Grant a, with the active hands nearly going to come away with the steal. They're going to call a jump ball here or uh, they're just going to let him roll around? Well, I don't think anybody <laughs> had possession of the ball, so roll around it was. <laughs> uh, ball goes out of bounds. Not, I believe it's going to be Mustang possession. The freshman faw faw. It into the ball game. Molina coming out. Looked like they actually called that a jump ball finally. <laughs> huh. Huh. What do I know? Inbound goes to Bible. Bible quick shot up and good. Nice two-point bucket right there. Ready Mustangs lead 5-0 now. Scorekeeper. Active hands by a nice Bible. Backcourt. Lady Panthers get the ball inbound. Way up. No good. Boone with the rebound for the Lady Mustangs. Boone gives it to Bible. And then Bible to Grant. Grant swings it left. A little quick wide open in the left corner for three. Her shot a little strong. Allison Boone with the offensive board. Gets hit in the head. Losing possession. And now she's on her back. Cradling the ball. You know, here we were. We were talking about the last game, how the, the rest were calling quick junk balls. These guys are kind of just laying on it and letting them roll around. I mean. I guess each one's got their own. As long as they're consistent, the way they call it all night long, I'm okay with it. <laughs> just I, I just want consistency is key. Exactly. Ball's going to be stolen. Bible gets gets possession, and she's going to be fouled. As it looks like number 21 for Glencoe she was that foul. Super long hair, so yeah, it was number 21. That Samara Riba, the senior, for the Lady Panthers. Mustangs have possession. Molina back into the ball game. Paul Paul has it left wing. Now goes down low to, to the block. The Bible. Bible shot a little strong. No good. Riva brings the ball up the court now for the Lady Panthers. Stops. Now gets possession once again. She's going to try to set up the offense for Glenco. Frontier's links and, and pressure has not really gotten let. Glencoe get any shots off. Yeah, and uh, Little Cook's going to scoop up the loose ball, and she's going to take it coast to coast for a layup, and your Lady Mustangs up on top early. 7-0 here, 441 left to play in this opening quarter. 30-second timeout, Glencoe, we're going to keep it right here. As you stated, that length and their trap defense that they run is, I mean, it's like peas and carrots, you know? Yeah. Glinko doesn't really have much size to him or links, and it's it's tough to get around those longer, taller girls. 
And you would you would think seeing the Lady Mustangs once, you would you think you could try to formulate a a game plan to attack it, but so far nothing working for the Glencoe Lady Panthers. And I've seen the, now this is my fifth game, the call again for the Lady Mustangs and this zone, the, the press zone that they run really has given trouble to everybody, including uh, when they beat number 10 Ripley uh, a few nights ago. Riva and the Panthers, no problem breaking the press that time. Ball nearly deflected, or it was deflected, nearly turned over. Uh, yeah, far fall there. She's uh, the 5'10 freshman, excellent reach. Lady Mustangs playing intense defense, which is standard. Deep three. Shot is up. Linko is finally good. on the board. Molina kind of kind of upset with herself there. She she slid back to, to take the cutter for the layup and left her her lady wide open for the three. Lady Mustangs, excellent ball movement here. Fall fall down low to little quick, little quick layup. Up and, and good. good. Bucket yeah. counts. That's going to put the sophomore number one, Olivia Littlecook, at the line shooting one, trying to convert a conventional three-point play as the Lady Mustangs lead by six here in the first quarter, 3.56 left to play. Free throw a little no. strong, no good. Lady Panthers get the rebound. Cut off. Ooh, Ooh, and and Littlecook's going to get a, get the steal. One on two numbers. Over. Great, great pass and okay. great vision and teamwork there by the Lady yeah. Mustangs. As Little Cook, two points, and then the assist there on that possession. Fall, fall, and Little Cook nearly trap, and then quick timeout by Glencoe before the 10-second call. And I believe it's a 30-second timeout, so we'll just go ahead and keep it right here. You know that Frontier Lady Mustang press is menacing. That's two quick timeouts by Glencoe. Yeah, it is. Uh, they really don't have an answer for it so far. And then on another thing, I've been really impressed with the, late, the Frontier Lady Mer Mustangs. It's like they don't have an ego, uh, individual egos. They aren't ever scared to pass the ball around. They share the rock really well. Yes, they do. Uh, a lot of great ball movement and really a lot of unselfishness, and that is why they're going for the 12th win on the year, and that's why they're ranked number 14 in the state in Class A basketball. So. They will have a daunting task next weekend there at the Chisholm Invitational. We saw yes. that. We saw that schedule. The, who they who yes, they got there do. and a couple top 15 ranked opponents next weekend. Do you believe it's Visai and Ceiling? Correct. I, I I would have to check again. I I do not recall, but number they were both top 10. I do know that top 15 anyway. It'll be a showcase for sure. Shot, no good. There we go. That's oh, they're going to call a possession arrow. Jump ball. He he had the right call. She had both hands on the ball, and he, he's just a little slow to call it at first. Molina gets the inbound. Quick. Uh, back to the middle. Break the press for Glinko. Oh, a little, little hot on the pass. Yeah, yeah, trying to get it to Boone and with that teamwork there. And just, uh, as you said, pass a little hot turnover. Trying to go long down the sideline. Pass a little hot. Turnover once again. That's Bible. Molina. Oh, she's got her mask off now. Yeah, Good. I noticed that. Uh, so that mask did not even last the first quarter. I, I mean, I don't blame it. It's just hard to breathe out there. Like, I can't even call a game with my mask <laughs> on. I can't imagine trying to play a game. I've gotten used to it. I, I wear it just about everywhere I go. All day long. Now, when I'm at home, I'm free finally. Right. Molina for three. Little... A little short on it. Hit the front of the rim. Bounced around. Boone with the rebound. Yeah, Boone uh, does a tremendous job for the Lady Mustangs on the offensive glass. Really a game changer. Nice Bible vital to drive. Fake instead. Down low. Shot blocked. Block no by good. 35 for Glencoe. Good defense there by the Lady Panthers. Good help defense. That was the senior Clark on the swat there for the Lady Panthers. Lady Mustangs up by eight. 11 to three. Two and a half off the play here in this first quarter. It's been all frontier so far. Lady Mustangs, or excuse me, Lady Panthers trying to get a clean look, trying to go down low. Ball ball is going to come away with the steal. Bible with the tremendous defense as well. Yeah, she tipped that away right into Fall Fall's hands right there. It was great oh. team effort on that steal. 
Little Cook goes down low to Boone. Boone shot, no good. Gets her on board, puts it back up. Her shot up and good. Man, she's just being an animal down there. Lady Mustangs up by 10 now. A minute 58 left to play in this first quarter. And they force yet another turnover. Again, that length comes into play. They're trying to beat that press, and Glencoe's trying to throw over the top, and every time they do, they have to throw it long, and it's just sailing out of bounds. Grant coming back into the ball game. Bible's going to get the break for the Lady Mustangs. Under two now left in the first. Lady Mustangs up by ten. Swing it left. Now back up top. Grant gives it the fall, 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 fall. Going Cutter. To Ooh, that's all right. Good hands by uh, Glinko there to get a deflection and stop a possession for a layup. Potentially save two points. Going to have fire a deep three. Rolls around the rim. No good. Little Cook with the rebound. Gets it to Grant in the corner. Now Grant thinks about going right and says she's going to stop and pop. I think and that might have been a pass to Allison Boone, but Allison wasn't watching. No, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll give her credit for the for the assist there. We'll be nice. Uh, either way, Frontier scores and increases our lead to 12. Rarely rare see her miss that bad on a, on a three-point shot like that. Yeah, I think she took herself out of it when she dribbled backwards one dribble, pulled herself away from the basket. That's why it fell short. Yeah, I just uh, probably thought about it a little too much, but no big deal. Lady Mustangs cruising early, up by 12. 57 and, and a half seconds left to play in this first quarter. Burge is in for Fall Fall now. That's number three, Ariana Burgess, the junior. Lady Mustangs need to get the ball across half court. Little Cook does that. Now they get it on out of Boone. Boone, excellent pass right back to Molina. Her shot, no good. Rare you see Molina miss a layup like that down low. Oh, yeah. Here, Coach Bird on the sideline yelling, do not foul. Don't give them anything cheap as this quarter comes to an end. Here, 38 seconds remaining and counting. Lady fans are trying to move the ball, trying to see if they can end this first quarter on a high note. They're trying to run a play, and it looked like they were uh, caught off guard there. Seemed like a little frustration out there yeah, in one this, of the players. This lady missing defense is missing and irritating, and they just, I mean, they go hard the whole 32 minutes, and th th they can get rather annoying for an opposing defense offense. Excuse me. Yes. Like I said, they come off the bench with three girls that are just as equivalent as the starters. And they're really, really starting to gel, getting healthy, getting girls back from quarantine, and uh, really – the sky is the limit for the, for these young ladies. Yes, it Not is. Not a senior on the squad, so pretty young team. Glenco subbing in, number three for number 21. That's Shania Gomez, the sophomore, coming into the ball game for the Lady Panthers. As Frank, the senior, at the free throw line. Free throw, no good. Molina with the rebound. Eight seconds left. Little Cook has the ball. Now Six, gets across half court. Five, gets Grant. four. Three, two, Grant down one. Little Cook, Little Cook back outside the boom. Good Three shot. Point shot. shot. Oh. Rolls around the rim. No good. And that is how our quarter will end. The Lady Mustangs up on top early with a lead of 15-3 here in this championship game. We'll be back when the sec with the second quarter. Six, seven, or visit versatilenetworks.com for more information. Pros with Squirtle Live. Find out more at squirtle.com slash stream. Score that perfect design at Touchdown Graphics just north of the curve in Pond Creek. They offer screen printing and embroidery on t-shirts, shorts, hoodies, and more. Show your spirit for your school, team, club, or special event where they cut Welcome back. Glencoe, Oklahoma here at Glencoe High School. In the 49th annual Glencoe Invitational, Lady Mustangs looking to bring home their fourth straight championship. And uh, judging by that first quarter, they are well on their way as they are lead by 12. 
with a score of 15 to 3 after one. Any first quarter thoughts there, Charles? Glencoe's got to find a way to beat the Mustang uh, defense, and I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, they, this is like we said earlier. This is their second look at the Lady Mustangs. The Lady Mustangs won. I believe it was like 56-31 there early in the season, and uh, things stay the same. Our score probably rivaled that one here tonight, here in this championship game. And you know something about that first game score when you think about it. Those practices to start the year, they were not going five on five. They were doing individual drills and things like that. Oh, uh, okay. And like you said right now, they're meshing together well because they have had a lot of time since we've been able to do a little bit more of like three on three, four on four, five on five type stuff. Yeah, and then not being able to work together as a team due to COVID protocols. Right. Grant fires a three. Her shot, no good. Lanny Panthers running. Pass behind the Lady Panther. She's going to fall down, turn the ball over. Good uh, pressure there by the Lady Mustangs. That is Bible with the defensive pressure. Lady Mustangs have possession. Bible gets the inbound to Grant. Grant to Little Cook. Little Cook swings it to Grant. Grant now swings it to Burgess. Fall, fall back up top. Grant fakes the three. Now she's going to drive inside. Drive. Off the glass. No good. Rebound goes to the Lady Panthers. 21 for the Lady Panthers. That's I was going to say, it seemed like a little bit of a break, breakdown right there by the Lady Mustangs on the transition defense. Let uh, Riba go right to the hoop. Got a deflection, though, at least. Yeah, Lady Mustangs, active hands on the defensive side. Coach Bird happy about that. Kick ball there on that inbound. We'll try it once again. Fall fall guarding the inboundy. Inbounder. Ball to Riva in the backcourt. Now she's going to swing it left. To the 35. That's Jill Clark. Lady Panther is going to try to set up an offense here to penetrate this front tier. Lady Mustang. Tough defense. Seems like the Lady Mustangs just keep pushing them further and further out from that three-point line where Glencoe wants to live at right now. Lady Mustangs doing a tremendous job making life tough for the Lady Panthers. They try three. to go down low, draws three Lady Mustangs. Yeah. And we have a... Quick jump ball. Jump ball. Position arrow in favor of the Lady Mustangs. Se seems like the whistle getting a little quicker there. Yeah, for agree? sure. For sure. Looks like we got uh, some subs coming in. Caitlin Ruff and Jamie Molina. Molina back in. Fall fall and Burgess going to the bench for the Lady Mustangs. Little Cook and Bible playing catch there in the backcourt. Ball tip behind the backcourt. Lady Mustangs secure possession. Gets it to Little Cook. Little Cook gets it to Grant. Now she's going to clear and she's going to set up an offense for the Lady Mustangs. Back to Grant. Grant swings to Little Cook. Little Cook. Now back to Grant. Three Grant. minutes, ten seconds into this quarter. We're still scoreless by both teams. Shot up. No good. As our score remains the same. 15 to 3. 539 left to play in the first half. Still, as Outside. Charles said, scoreless first quarter. Shot missed badly there by the late Panthers, but... They get their own rebound. Tried to force it in there. And active hands there. Grant comes away with the steal. And then she's going to turn the ball right back over. Lady Panthers really kind of playing erratic here. Ball going to Clark up top. Clark being drawn by Molina. Drives baseline. Shot up. No good. But they're going to call the foul Blocking on number foul. five. Caitlin Ruff. The freshman. Yes. That's going to put number 35, Clark, at the line, shooting two. First free throw, a little strong, no good. Our score remains the same. Still zero buckets here in this second quarter from either squad, as our score is still 15-3, 5-0-6 left to play here in the half. Second free throw, rolls around the rim, no good as well. Little Cook secures a rebound for the Lady Mustangs. Brings the ball up the court, now she's going to spin inside, passes it to Molina Molina. 
Ball fake. Two-point shot. Up and a little strong. But she was fouled. She picks herself up off the court. And that's going to put the sophomore Jamie Molina at the line. Shooting two for the Lady Mustangs. Let's see if we can uh, break the containers off of these rims. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they pulled a little quick switch me job there in that 60 second break between the first and second quarter. Yes. Molina's free throw is pure. First point scored of the first or the second quarter. Taylor Grant goes out. Allison Boone back in. Second free throw no good. Nearly possession narrow or excuse me, tied ball, possession arrow in favor of the Lady Panthers. Excellent defense there by the Lady Mustangs. We say that a lot because it's true. Lady Panthers bringing the ball back down the court. Trying to get some points. As so far, only a field goal, three points allowed from the Lady Mustangs all game. Their night defense just nightmarish tonight. Ooh, uh Nice bucket there by number 40. She might have got away with a little bit of a push off on Boone. Yeah, that's to clear some space. That's the freshman Tara Fitton. Uh, she scores two points. Ref going for the quick turnaround jump shot. Her shot was blocked out of bounds by Clark. Clark, excellent size down there for the Lady Panthers. With the match tandem down there of Clark, and it looks like the freshman Fitton, uh, the Lady Panthers really. Kind of going with a bigger lineup here. Now they got 33 back in. So, yeah, their lineup just got pretty good size there. Kay I think that might actually outsize the uh, Lady Mustangs now. Yeah. Nice drive by Anias Bible. Bible uses some quickness, drives to the bucket, layup, good. As the Lady Mustangs lead by 13 now, 18-5, 4 5 left to play. You see, that's the problem. Glencoe took in the size but gave up the speed, and now our girls should be able to take and drive all night long if they wanted to. Little Cook finds the wide open Bible on the low block. Her shot up and good. Excellent find there by Little Cook. As the Mustangs now up by 15. Oh, nice defense by Anias Bible. Cut her off. Got the hands on the ball. Knocked out of bounds. Yeah, excellent job. Uh, saves two points there. Lady Mustangs have really quick hands, and that's coming from about all of them that touch the court. Yes. Inbound goes to the three-point line. And we have a traveling we violation. Still the feet right there. 33 Frank did not like that call. But doesn't matter if she likes it or not. And we have a technical foul. I'm guessing they called that technical on number 13 as she just went right over to the bench. Uh, must have said something there to the officials. I did not hear it. Any, any intake on that? I kind of missed what happened. It just happened so quick. I was focused on what's going down in the backcourt with the Frontier Mustangs. Uh, I just turned down to look and ta-da, technical foul. Yeah, that foul was on uh, that number 13 for the Lady Panthers. Darcy Green, the sophomore, is going to put Molina at the line shooting the technical. She had to say something, uh, not liking that, I'm guessing, that, that call that didn't go their way. Free throw up and good for Molina. More, more or less, that's a frustration foul there. Yeah, um, because simple fact, like everybody sees and what we've been saying all night, Lady Mustang defense is pesky. Yeah. They're, They're going to cause a lot of frustration, and that right there, like you said, was a frustration technical right. foul. They are passing. The, there's not an Orkin man in sight, I don't think. As the Lady Mustangs have possession, try to get it to Molina in the corner, ball deflected out of bounds. Let's Good quick hands there by the freshman Fenton, deflecting that pass away from Molina. Bible inbounds to Little Cook, right back to Bible, back to Little Cook. Little Cook to Ruff, wide open shot, no good. Rebound goes to Clark and the Lady Panthers. The Lady Panthers are going to run now. Now run into it, almost Ooh, a trap. Nice drive. Base wide Lady open layup there. Lady Mustangs give up the baseline. Coach Bird not happy about it. 
as she's going to call a quick timeout with her Lady Mustangs leading here in the first half, 22-7 with 3.13 left to play, just a 30-second timeout, so we're just keep it right here on the broadcast. Once again, I am Ben Welch, the voice here of the Frontier Mustangs on Squirtle and 104.7 The Bull. Joining me is Mr. Charles Sanders there from Frontier. We'll, we'll be in Frontier at Frontier Gym Tuesday as the Blackwell Maroons come to town. I say we as in 1047 The Bull. Uh, carry that game on the radio. Pre-game starts at 6.15 as girls tip off at 6.30. So tune in if you can't watch live to 1047 The Bull and uh, you'll catch all the Frontier Mustang versus the Blackwell Maroon action here next Tuesday night. And always remember, our live stream is FrontierMustangs.tv all over Squirtle. You can also catch the audio there as well. So uh, listen to me a couple ways there. Melina has possession. Now she's going to swing it all the way outside. Asking for the ball down the right block. Ref tries to get it to her. We're going to call a double dribble. Melina just left wide open there on the low block. Frontier missed one. Lady Mustangs leading 22-7. 255 off the play here in this first half. Lady Panthers kind of slowing the game down a little bit. Clark has it. I Gets really it. don't think that the uh, Lady Mustangs want the game to slow down. They want to keep the pressure. They want to keep the tempo going fast in their favor. Yeah, they, they don't believe in slow. No. And see, that's what happens right there. I think we had a little mismatch. We had uh, Allison Boone on a smaller player, and the guard just took her off the dribble to the basket. Yeah, that was the senior Samara Riba. She'll be at the line shooting two for the Glencoe Lady Panthers. Free throw up and good. And see if Glencoe can keep this up and just keep getting to the free throw line. This, this might be problematic for the uh, Lady Mustangs. Little Cook and Boone going to the bench. Get a little breather here. Get some water. Second free throw, no good. Deflected out of bounds off the freshman for the Lady Panthers. Lady Mustangs have possession. Leading 22-8. Two and a half left to play here in the first half. It's been all frontier Mustangs all night long. Grant going to bring the ball up to court now. Swings it right to Fawfall. They try to go down low. Ball's going to be deflected out of bounds. Looks like Bible. Was the last one to touch it for the Lady Mustangs. Ball coming the other way. Robert going to walk the ball up the court. Lady Mustangs trying to they trap there. Pressure getting there out of control, going fast. And they're going to call a foul. Looks like it's going to be on number 20, Bible. Like the active hands, but when you put them out, that's always going to be a foul. That is Bible's first foul. Clean inbound goes to Riba. Riba being picked up defensively there by Fawfall. Now she's going to get it. Gets it to Fenton. Fenton goes back to Riba in the corner. Fawfall with her hands up. Riba tries to drive inside. A little bit of bully ball there. Shot up. No good. Possession arrow, jump ball once again. Possession arrow in favor of the Lady Mustangs. Lady Mustangs defense once again. Uh, stifling. It is very stifling. Only eight points given up so far in this first half. Lady Mustangs scored 22, so they are well in control, up by 14. Grant gets it to Bible. Bible to Molina, going to fire a deep to her shot. Pretty. Nothing Man. but the bottom of the net. Her shot is so smooth. It's not even funny. She is a great spot-up catch-shoot player. And it doesn't matter if she's from uh, mid-range, down low, free throw line, three-point line. Uh, she's not afraid to take any shot on the court. No. You know, I say she's a great spot-up shooter. She can take it off the dribble, too. I watched her uh, during that Ripley game, like you said. She had a couple where she took one dribble forward. Step back and pop the three. 
And if she uh, can be more consistent with that shot, she's going to be a nightmare Here's for that. everybody in Class A basketball. Mid-range jumper again from Jamie Molina. Yeah, just different side of the court here. She's showing she can go left or go right. As the Lady Mustangs increase their lead to 18 now. Under a minute left to play here in this first half. Three-point shot, no good. Molina secures the loose ball. Lady push Mustangs it, have numbers. It. Three on one. Nice Gets it to back. fall, 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 fall. Tries to lay up a little floater soft off the glass. No good. Uh, Lady Mustangs need to convert those three-on-ones. Glencoe is, you know, they're taking some quality outside shots. It's just looking like they're hard or short. Yeah. Not that, not that they're rushing them. They're just not, uh, can't buy a basket tonight for whatever reason. Cold, gone cold tonight. 22.8 seconds left to play here in this first half. Lady Mustangs dominating the Glencoe Lady Panthers here in the championship matchup in the Glencoe Invitational. 26-8 is our score. Lady Mustangs will, I'm guessing, will use this last 22.8 and get one possession here. Let's see what they do. Get the ball to the hand. Get the ball in the hands of the freshman. Fall, fall. Now drives inside the Bible. Ooh. Bible passes up the shot. Back outside. No good. Gets the rebound. No good. Puts it back up and contact and a foul. Pretty unusual to see somebody there on the low block, wide open layup, and then pass it back outside. Yeah, I would have taken the layup myself, but she probably saw something we did. Oh yeah, of course, of course. You know, she'll be at the line shooting too. Bible first free throw, no good. Our score stays the same, 26-8, 6.8 left in the first half. Seems like Glenn Close subbing for maybe some more offense. Yeah, here with 6.8, probably going to try to get the rebound and maybe try to run here. Not a lot of time left on the clock here in the first half. Here's Second the bucket. Good free throw shot. is good. And of course, Frontier's not going to let him push that ball for an easy shot. Stolen mm -hmm. at half court. Three-point shot from Molina in the corner. Oh. Oh, and in and out, a little strong, no good. And that is how our first half will end. Your Frontier Lady Mustangs all over the Glencoe Lady Panthers, leading by 19 here at the half with a score of 27 to 8. We're going to take a timeout, play some commercials, and we'll be back here with the second half. Don't go anywhere. Graphics. Call 580-532-4579 or see them online at touchdowngraphics.com. Touchdown Graphics. It's good. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. When it comes to cellular service, why pay for data you don't use? Pioneer Cellular offers a variety of plans designed to give you the lowest prices on the data you and the others on your plan really need. That's why people all over are switching to Pioneer. Pioneer Cellular can save you money on your family plan, no matter how you define family. Do the math. Visit our website at gopioneer.com, call us at 800-641-2732, or stop by a local Pioneer store. Find out how much we can save you. Great Plains Land Company came together out of a desire to return to what a land company should be, a client-centered organization as passionate about the land as you are. Land is not something we deal with from 8 to 5. Land is truly our passion. Whether you are looking for your dream property or listing a property, you need an experienced land specialist working for you. We invite you to call our Great Plains Land Team today at 405-761-4808. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. 
Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space, we would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation and get you back up and running the way you should be. Call Versatile Networks today at 405 217 0267 or visit versatilenetworks.com for more information. Find out more at squirtle.com slash stream. Score that perfect design at Touchdown Graphics just north of the curve in Pond Creek. They offer screen printing and embroidery on t-shirts, shorts, hoodies, and more. Show your spirit for your school, team, club, or special event with a custom design from Touchdown Graphics. Call 580-532-4579 or see them online at touchdowngraphics.com. Touchdown Graphics. It's good. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. When it comes to cellular service, why pay for data you don't use? Pioneer Cellular offers a variety of plans designed to give you the lowest prices on the data you and the others on your plan really need. That's why people all over are switching to Pioneer. Pioneer Cellular can save you money on your family plan, no matter how you define family. Do the math. Visit our website at gopioneer.com, call us at 800-641-2732, or stop by a local Pioneer store. Find out how much we can save you. Great Plains Land Company came together out of a desire to return to what a land company should be, a client-centered organization as passionate about the land as you are. Land is not something we deal with from 8 to 5. Land is truly our passion. Whether you are looking for your dream property or listing a property, you need an experienced land specialist working for you. We invite you to call our Great Plains Land Team today at 405-761-4808. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, 
bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging, work seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Diesel Horse Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Diesel Horse get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space? We would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation and get you back up and running the way you should be. Call Versatile Networks today at 405-217-0267 or visit versatilenetworks.com for more information. Welcome back to the Glencoe Invitational. Second half will be starting here shortly. I mean, maybe let's see if Glencoe's going to show back up. Surely they didn't just say check it in at the half, did they? No, I think uh, Coach Sotai may be in there trying to do some last second adjustments with his girls. Here they come now. It's crazy. I. Uh, Never seen really anybody take the whole duration of halftime and not even come up, warm up, until, and I've seen it twice recently, probably within the last week. Last game, uh, the Mustangs did it against Ripley, or I, I think the men. They didn't come up, worn out, and then uh, Glencoe does it here, so they don't need to stretch before half. No big deal. Starting a half, it's going to be Glencoe's ball. And they are in some kind of hole here, down 19. Still a lot of game left, but they're going to have to try to get this cut down within 10 or so, I would say, going into the fourth quarter if they don't have any chance to try to spark a comeback. Just that one herself. Fortunately for the Mustangs, she gets possession of it. And that gives it to Grant. Grant trying to set up a little bit of offense. Needs a little help. Little and Cook breaking over. She finally gets a little help from Little Cook. Little Cook gives it right back to Grant. Now down low to Boone. Boone shot up and good. As she just worked number 35 Clark and gets the bucket. You know, like we talked about earlier, I explained to you when she was younger, she was a guard and she handled the ball like a guard right there. Boone stopping. Now she's going to get the hands into the to the guard, Little Cook. Little Cook back up top. Now swings it left to Molina. Molina fakes the three. Now goes across court. Little Cook wide open three. Her shot rolls around the rim and just pops back out. That actually hit three Frontier players before rolling away. And now we're going to have a foul. I believe they're going to call that a push on number 22, Boone. Yeah. Her second. That's what we'd call a hustle foul. She was going after a loose ball and just come up at the wrong end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coaches most of the time can live with hustle fouls. Ball deflected out of bounds. Looks like went off of the Lady Panthers. Frontier has possession. Bible gets the inbound to the little cook. Little cook quickly gives it back to Bible. Ball crosses half court to Grant. Grant. Linko with the uh, adjustment in the half. They're going to trap in the half court it looks like. Yeah, they were going to try to get as many possessions as they can down big. Uh, Bible just takes possession away from the Lady Panthers. Uh, and they have a forced to jump ball. Possession arrow was in favor of the Lady Mustangs. I'm not sure if the referee wanted to call a charge or a uh, block. So he just went with the jump ball instead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have uh, gotten... Gotten a lot of practice on jump ball situations here in this ball game. And, you know, that's always been the uh, key to, like, girls' basketball. It, it's usually a jump ball fest when it comes to girls' basketball. Yeah, for sure, and, and it is. Tonight's been uh, a jump ball fest, not only tonight, but all weekend as well. One of the Lady Panthers there takes a dive on the court. Great sportsmanship showed by Coach Bird for Lady Mustangs, helping her up. Lady Mustangs have possession. Going up top to Grant, or excuse me, that's Molina. Lays it up off the glass. Her shot up and score, up and good. She had a nice little step through right there. Faked the pass out to the wing and slipped under the defender for the layup. And uh, 
you can tell that she's just gotten better as the season has gone along, and that's going to strike fear. That should strike fear in everybody that the front three Lady Mustangs are going to have to play. Quick three-pointer, a little short. Yeah, it didn't get enough legs in that one, I don't think. But Little Cook gets the rebound. Now she's going to slow things down. Instead, she's going to stop and pop. And her three-point bucket is good. Letty Mustangs open up a 20-point lead now here with 5.26 left to play in this third quarter. All front tier all night. We have five. a timeout. Full timeout by Glenco. We're going to cut to our sponsors. Find out more at squirtle.com slash stream. Score that perfect design at Touchdown Graphics just north of the curve in Pond Creek. They offer screen printing and embroidery on t-shirts, shorts, hoodies, and more. Show your spirit for your school, team, club, or special event with a custom design from Touchdown Graphics. Call 580-532-4579 or see them online at touchdowngraphics.com. Touchdown Graphics. It's good. And welcome back here. Third quarter action. Lady Mustangs commanding a 23-point lead right now, 34-11. Little Cook just made a three from the left wing. Great find there from Molina. The sophomore combo between Little Cook and Molina for the Lady Mustangs is a lethal force. Oh, yeah. Lady Panther set to inbound, coming from this timeout. Inbound goes to number 21 there for the Lady Panthers. Now struggle getting it across off court, turn the ball over. That's Bible with the steal. Gives it to Little Cook. Little Cook now back up top to Boone. Her shot up high off the glass and good. Great vision. Right there from the sophomore Little Cook to find Boone streaking towards the basket and uh, rewarded with a two-point bucket. Quick kick for three right there by Glinko. Finally, another outside shot since the first quarter. Yeah, uh, that rim really went blank for them there in that second quarter. A little relief for the Lady Panthers as they finally saw one go through the net. Molina and the Mustangs have possession. Little Cook thinks about a deep three and said gets it to Grant. Grant down low to Boone. Now Boone's going to get it to Bible. Bible really wasn't looking for the ball there. Nearly saves possession instead. Possession goes to the Lady Panthers. Now she's going to jump back in there and force a, a, a tie ball situation. The Glencoe player didn't have anywhere to go. Her, her teammates were around, but again, Frontier surrounded her. She, she just took a seat. Nowhere to go. Just sit down and enjoy the show. An another thing that I've noticed about the Frontier Lady Mustangs on the offensive side, they don't take hardly any bad shots. Every shot they take is, is a well a good quality shot. And you're going to win a lot of basketball games doing that. A little too active with the hands there. And they're going to call the foul. Jamie Molina on that one. Lady Mustangs uh, looks like they had good position and had a trap set up. Got bailed out there by a whistle. Did Glenn, po or Glenn Coe, excuse me. Cross court pass stolen by Allison Boone. Lady Frontier, Lady Fr Lady Mustangs doing a great job. Molina lo nearly loses possession. She does. Tries to steal it. Three point shot, no good. Ball going to go out of bounds off of the Lady Panthers. Lady Mustangs have possession and a 25 point lead uh, here with 3.59 left to play in third. They are well on their way to. Bringing home the Glencoe, winning the Glencoe invitation for the fourth year in a row. Little Cook gets it to Fall Fall. Fall Fall back to Little Cook. Little Cook left alone, thinks about a three and said, drops inside, now back outside. Gets it to Fall Fall. Fall Fall swings it left to Burgess. Burgess down low to Molina. Molina tries to go to on down low to Little Cook. Her shot blocked, no good. On that last dead ball, uh, Frontier had a couple of uh, substitutions in. Uh, Ariana Burgess and Diana Fawfall. Now, now Boone. We, yeah, now we have another substitution. Caitlin Ruff in for Allison Boone. Boone going to take a much, much needed and well-deserved break. Shot up and good. 
Our score now 38 to 11 with three and a half left to play here in this third quarter. Riva brings the ball down the court and then she's going to get it to Clark. Ball down low, foul. See who they're going to call that foul on. Foul was on number 33, Fafa. A little bit of a size mismatch there. Had uh, Caitlin Ruff on her backside. Tried to jump around and steal that ball and left her wide open. Diane Fafa come across to give help and just jumped into her. Just going to put the freshman Fenton at the line. Shooting to her first free throw. No good. Second free throw. Fine good. 38-12 our score now. Mustangs get the ball across off court, get it into the hands of the long arm fall fall. Now she gets it to Molina, the free throw jump shot. Up and good. She got that shooter's roll on that soft touch right there. Uh, Molina will take that shot all night long if given to her. Oh yeah. Actually I don't think there's a shot on the court that Molina won't take if it's given to her. She'd probably be standing in that Panther right there at half court and shoot it if she's wide open. A lot of work going down low. 33, Frank puts up a shot. It is no good, but she was fouled. Foul called on number three, Burgess. That's going to put 33, Kayla Frank, the senior, at the line. First free throw short off the rim, no good. Substitutions for Lady Frontier Mustangs. Uh, Molina's going out. Anias Bible in. And Maybe a little cookout. Grant into the ball game as well. The junior, Taylor Grant. Second free throw, no good. Fawfaw gets the rebound. Fawfaw has pretty good ball skills as well. Uh, bringing the ball up the court. Tremendous asset for the Lady Mustangs. Again, our uh, girls, Frontier Lady Mustangs, young and uh, pretty much getting a trial by fire with these girls, you know. A lot of playing time due to the COVID situation. Ball going to be turned over. Going, for the, baseball going for the Hail Mary. Yeah. Shot with no good, blocked by Grant. Possession going back the other way to the Lady Mustangs. Speaking of Hail Marys, uh, you got, who you going for tomorrow? You NFL guy? No. What you see me doing right now, watching basketball, this is what I do. Well, so, I don't understand why Fall Fall was hesitant to pick the ball up. It's going to be a turnover either way, so wouldn't you want to kind of pick it up and just stop momentum of the game instead of trying to maybe give up a cheap two? Yeah, because then you have to put them in a set, a set offense where they have to throw it in. You still steal the ball back. Yeah. Right so there, you let them get back into a fluid offense, and it, it could be deadly for you. But as you say, I mean, young team, I'm sure Coach Bird will, will talk to her about that. And, hey, it, it's okay, but here, here's what we should do next time. Growing pains of a young team. Yeah. But tonight, not, not a problem at all. They lead by 28, 40 to 12 with a minute 34 left to play in the third. You know, they may be a young team, but they have quite a bit of basketball IQ, all of them. Lady Panthers yeah, drive inside and ball ball draws the charge. Yeah, she just bully balled again right there and just forced her down. And now it seems like... Uh, Fafa may have banged her head on the floor. Yeah, you, I heard a loud thud up here, and she is still on the court. Uh, hopefully she, the young lady is not hurt too severe. Hopefully maybe just a lump and not a concussion. Yeah. Our score, 40-12, to 12, Lady Mustangs all over the Glencoe Lady Panthers here in the championship matchup of the Glencoe Invitational. Lady Mustangs well on their way of securing their fourth straight championship. And I would imagine up big and uh, with a potential head injury. Of course, we're not doctors. We're not speculating or anything. But we had a, heard a loud thump and she was kind of down. I, I, I would be surprised if we even saw Fall Fall back into this ballgame. 
you know, with net just for precautionary with, reasons. Yeah, do with the uh, head injury protocols. You know, she still would probably have to go get checked out first and before she can return. Right, and I mean, and in a blowout, I mean, a minute thirty twenty six left in the third. Really, no reason to even risk it. You know, just uh, let her go ahead and take the rest of the evening off. Oh yeah. Lady Mustangs have possession. Going to bring the ball up the court. Gets it across half court. Molina, wide open. Thinks about a shot instead. She's going to pass. Nearly turns the ball over. Good defense there from the Lady Panthers. Molina has the ball back in the corner. Now she's going to try to go down low to Boone. Ball was deflected. Stolen from the Lady Mustangs. It was kind of a shot. She had that wide open elbow jumper. She, she actually turned it down. Yeah, I was surprised too. Trying to be a... Be a team player there, get some assists. And that that is that is a great team player thinking of her teammates first. Yeah, absolutely. And then the Lady Mustangs are full of team players. Uh, that's why they're so successful and so good. 33 there for Glinko with the drive and the layup. That's Kayla Frank, the senior. Lady Mustangs have possession. Boone, wide open left in the corner. Must not be much of a shooter. She did not shoot. Molina forces up a wild shot. It's no good. Lady Panthers have the rock. Try to get it to Gomez in the corner. Ball, little errant. Yeah, Turnover. Wide right there on her. Our score, 40 to 14. 12 seconds left to play in the third. Lady Mustangs dominating here. Going to hold for one. See if Molina gets it there at the free throw line. No, instead, Bible drives inside, layup, no good, off the glass, out of bounds, off of the Lady Mustangs. I think that was partially deflected there by number 35 for Glencoe. And then, of course, Anias just caught it out of bounds. Long full court heave, no good. And that is how our third quarter will end. The Lady Mustangs from Frontier all over the Lady Panthers here in the Glencoe Invitational Championship round, going into the fourth, leading 42-14. Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. When it comes to sailor service, why pay for data you don't use? Pioneer Sailor offers a variety of plans designed to give you the lowest prices on the data you and the others on your plan really need. That's why people... <laughs> Welcome back here. We are set to start the fourth quarter. Once again, I am Ben Welch. Joining me today, Charles Sanders. Live here on Scordal Frontier Mustang TV. What's the exact link there? It would be FrontierMustangs.tv. Catch us live. As the Lady Mustangs look to... Well, I mean, I'd say it, wrap it up, but this game is already wrapped up, up huge here with just eight minutes left, up by 26. Little Cook, Burgess, Bible, Molina, and Ruff on the court for the Mustangs to start the fourth. Up big. It'll be interesting to see how long Coach Bird leaves her starters into the ball game. Glenco number 21 called for a blocking foul right there. A little aggressive going after the ball. That's Samara Riba, the senior. Apologize if I'm not saying her name correctly, if there's any Glenco fans watching. Bible. Nice move. High off the glass, no good. She was fouled. A nice Bible will be shooting two for the Lady Mustangs. Looks like that foul called on number 40, the freshman, Tara Fenton. First shot up and in and out. It's not going to matter in this game, but somewhere down the road, Lady Mustangs clean up their free throw shooting. Uh, 
They will probably either win or lose a ball game depending on the outcome of the free throws. Very true. Free throws can make you or break you. Lady Panthers bring the ball down the court. Wide open three from the left corner. No good. Rebound Lina goes to Molina for the Lady down, Mustangs. Yeah. Stops and pops. Her shot short. Ruff with the hustle and the offensive rebound. No good on the putback, but she was fouled. Ruff will be at the line shooting two. Like I told you, these young girls have a lot of grit to them. They, they go after you they, now. They, they never take a minute off. Like, their conditioning, props to their conditioning. Because uh, when they're on the court, Coach Burr expects 100% hustle and effort from them. And from from what I can, can tell from the five games that I've watched and, and called, uh, that's exactly what Coach Burr gets. Oh, yeah. Fly around. It's the little things that make a big impact in the game. Absolutely. Lady Panthers bringing the ball up to court. Now picks up her dribble. That's 21. Riba drives inside. Now she's going to kick it outside to Gomez. Her shot, no good. Offensive rebound. Gomez has had that shot all night long in the corner, and it's just not dropping for her. Just kind of one of those nights, uh, nothing going right for the Glencoe Lady Panthers oh. and everything going right for the Lady Mustangs. They now lead 42-14, under seven left to play in this ball game. A little bit of give and go there. A little hard off the glass for that layup. Yeah, a little cook just go, goes in a little strong. No good. Three-point shot from Riva. Her shot falls. 42-17 40, our score now. I think that's only the third three-point bucket by Glencoe in the game. Yeah, they have not uh, shot well, and you can credit the frontier defense for that. Ball's going to go out of bounds off of the Lady Panthers, or excuse me, off of the Lady Mustangs. It'll be Lady Panther possession. As 35 Clark will be inbounding for the Lady Panthers. Riba right there to receive the inbound. Lady Mustangs kind of setting back, not really playing any uh, full court press defense here. Why would you? Six minutes left to go in the fourth. Lob inside. Good defense. Mm, little, little strong defense there at the end. Uh, yeah, excellent effort there by Frank going up with it the second time. Bucket was no good, but she'll be fouled in that. The line shooting too. That'll be the third foul on Anias Bible. Free throw. Good. 42-18, our score under six. Second free throw, good as well. Clark converts both that time at the free throw line. Bible brings the ball up to court. She's going to stop. Gives it a little quick, little quick to Molina. Molina gives it to Burgess for the three shot. No good. Rebound nice. goes to Quick the lady Mustang. Down low to Bible on the block. Her shot up and good, and she was fouled. It's going to put the sophomore a nice Bible at the line for the convention old-fashioned three-point play. Molina there with the, the quick instincts to hurry up and get that ball to the open Bible. Looks like we have a new Lady Mustang into the ball game. That's 32, Anisha Warrior, the yes, freshman. She's uh, noticed last game that uh, she's a pretty good shooter. She is a very young talent and will play just as hard as our starters. And that's exactly what you want for ladies coming in off the bench. That was great defense by uh, Bible there. Melinda can draw and dribble into the trap and that gets it right back. Fires a three. Her shot short off the rim. No good. 45-19 our score. Under five. Or excuse me, 5-15 and counting left to go. Three-point shot from Clark. No good. Rebound goes to Little Cook. Little Cook gets it to Bible. Bible, rough, rough's like, wow, there's nobody here. And set him, pass it back out. Now to Molina. Molina finds Little Cook wide open corner three. Her shot is up and nothing but the bottom of the net. Our score now 48 19 for the Lady Mustangs. They are rolling here in the fourth quarter. Now we have a timeout. By Ble the Lady Mustangs. Probably a substitution timeout. You think they're going to clear the bench here after that made three from the sophomore little cook? That's a possibility. Maybe she wanted to talk about something real fast on the offensive end. 
I mean, up, up huge, almost by 30. And the Lady Mustangs, Coach Bird, still find something to coach about here late in the in this ball game. So, oh, there's always a coachable moment out there, folks. Yes. And with her being young and, and eager, she wants to make a statement. Yeah. Not necessarily, you know, run the score up statement, but just a statement saying, hey, we're here, we're for real. All right, and this is, right, this is exactly what you're going to expect from the Frontier Lady Mustangs. And, of course, we stated earlier in the broadcast, next week at the Chisholm Invitational, or the Chisholm Festival, excuse me, yep. they're going to have a chance to prove that they're here and they're for real because they have a couple top 15 matchup next week in that Chisholm Festival. Now it looks like the Lady Mustangs Ooh. gonna clear the bench for Lady Mustangs set to check in. We figured that was what they were gonna do at that timeout, but they waited for the next dead ball. And really with a I mean as deep as Coach Bird plays her bench, it doesn't matter if you take your stories out or not, because all the minutes from the girls that they put in, played throughout the game as well. So, exactly. uh, I mean, wh what do you do? When your rotation balances out like that, where you have five, six, seven that plays just as much as your starters, mm -hmm. it's going to be, I mean, six, seven, eight that plays just as much as your starters. It's going to be a hard team to beat. Right. I mean, we look at the court right now. Now we have a three-point shot from number 10, fresh into the ball game for the Lady Mustangs. That is Rubidoux. Rubidoux. Uh, so now her, I believe, and 32 Warrior are about the only girls in the game right now that don't see meaningful action throughout the ball game as well. Right. But it's good for them young ladies to get in and get some game time, get some experience. 48-21, our score, 4 or 5 left to play. Free throws for the Glenclaw Lady Panthers. Had the end one right there, and she misses the, the end one. Frank misses the free throw. Grant with the rebound. Grant brings it up to court. Now for the Lady Mustangs. Gets it to Burgess. Burgess gets pushed. No call. She's going to go clear across court. Two-point jump shot. Two-pointer, yeah. Off the glass. No good. Boone with a hustle play right there to save the possession for a jump ball. And that is what you get with uh, Allison Boone, the junior. She's just full of hustle plays. Uh, and, I mean, you're up by... 27 and you still have your girls diving for loose balls that, that kind of effort is contagious to everybody on the court exactly and like I told you it's the little things that make a big, big impact in the game and that right there was a perfect example Boone and Grant coming out of the game now double zero Lila Bible the freshman into the game now she's got a wingspan on her about 6'2 at least. Yeah, she is super, looks like she's super long. Uh, get some quality minutes under her in here in a couple years that she could really blossom. Oh, yeah. Bucket from the Lady Panthers. They're within 25 now. Three and a half left. Ooh, nice read by number 13, Glenco for the steal. Bobbled it a little bit. That's the sophomore Darcy Green picked up that technical foul earlier. Gives it to Clark for the deep three. No good. Rebound goes to the Lady Mustangs. Burgess brings the ball up to court. She gets it to Warrior. Warrior thinks about a shot. So does Ruff. Instead, Ruff's going to drive back outside. Gets the ball knocked out of her hands. Possession arrow in favor, or excuse me, possession retain with the Lady Mustangs. And possession arrow is in favor of the Lady Mustangs as well for the next jump ball, which will probably happen here in a minute. Rubidoux has possession. She's going to drive inside, kick it back outside now. Lady Messing's in no hurry. I mean, why would you be up by 25 trying to get oh, yeah. the best shot possible for the reserve, get them some meaningful action? Bible back out front. Not a lot of heat on that pass. Frontier nearly turns the ball over. Deflected out of bounds. Good hustle there by the Lady Panthers. Down 25. They're not giving up either. You'd like to see both teams play until that final whistle. See, what I like to see right now is our young players out there for Frontier Mustangs, the Lady Mustangs, they're not forcing anything. They're taking their time, trying to pick them apart and get something easy. Number 14, Brooklyn Sanders into the ball game now for the Lady Mustangs. Yeah, they're just trying to, to run the offense to the best of their ability and uh, not force up anything ugly and 
add to this lead. Ruff has it in the backcourt, gives it to 32 Warrior, and we're going to have a foul. 225 left to play here in this ball game. Letty Mustangs up by 25. Uh, they have secured the their fourth straight Glencoe Invitational Tournament win. Glencoe's number 13 with her fifth foul. She pretty much already knew it. She was already jogging towards the bench. Yeah, that's the second time we've seen her do that. Uh, the first time was after she got that T earlier. Yep. Free throw is good from... I believe that's 32 Warrior at the free throw line. Yeah, I think it was just a common foul, so it was just a one and one. That's Anisha Warrior. Did I say her name right? Yes, Anisha Warrior. Second free throw, good as well. Good to see the freshman in there making her free throws when it counts. You never know when that could be a valuable asset down the road. Oh, yes. Reba Lina shot, no good. Blocks the shot from Glencoe there. Possession stays with the Lady Mustangs. And we're going to have a charge. And Nisha Warrior taking the charge, sacrificing her body. Again, little things, big impact. As who, who taught you that? That's a saying that was drilled in your head at some point in life. And uh, who, who gets credit for that saying? I played for Coach Weck Stein in the late 90s when we had our runs of state champions. And that was one of the things. He said, little things make a big impact in the game. And charges is one of those little things. And, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that not only in the game of basketball, the game of football as well. It's all about little things. Mm -hmm. I, was, I remember head coach Mike Kirtley there in Tonkawa running wind sprints. We got to reach down and touch the line or we got to start over again because it's the little things. As simple as touching the line while you're running sprints. Exactly. Squaring up when you catch the ball. Seeing the basket, seeing the open person. Just like our girls are doing right now. They're all squaring up, trying to see the opening, not forcing. Right there, perfect example. Took her time. Maybe a little out of control with the dribble. Ref forces up a shot. No good. Lady Mustangs have possession, though. 110 left to play. Oh, yep, yeah, minute 10, sorry. No, you're good. 50, 50 to 26, our score. Lady Mustangs defeat, well, I mean, not official yet, but beat Glencoe for the second time this year. 50 to 26 with a less than a minute. I'm going to say yes, they have defeated Glencoe yeah, Panthers. Yeah. Uh, I can hear nice the fat, bounce pass. fat lady singing now. Lady Mustang still have possession, not wanting to turn that ball over at all, wanting to just dribble out. And then they finally, oh, well, oh, here's that jump ball I called for earlier. There possession was, arrow in favor of the Lady Mustangs. There was those young players hitting the floor again, diving around. Yeah, you know, this is when... Uh, 20, 24 points up and 40 seconds left in the game, and we're still diving. That's Coach Bird has to be thrilled. Uh, with the effort of the reserves here tonight. Moments like these, they're not only auditioning, I mean, playing for this game, but they're auditioning for valuable minutes in a, in a meaningful game, a meaningful time throughout yes. the rest of the season. So Whether it be, you know, foul trouble or maybe an injury. Right. I, I would uh, never wish on anybody. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, get these young players in, get them some time, get them experience. And that is exactly what Coach Bird and the Lady Mustangs have done. And really in all three of the games here in this Invitational, uh, the reserves have played quite a bit. So uh, a lot of experience gained for the Lady Fr Mustangs from Frontier tonight as well. Oh, yes. 26.5 left in this game. Lady Mustangs uh, winning 50-28. to 28. Free throw, no good. Rebound goes to Bible and the Lady Mustangs. Anisha Warrior for three. Little her shot. Short. Oh, she wanted that. The bench wanted that. They all got to their feet. I guess the starters, but shot up. No good from the Lady Panthers. Now five seconds left. Warrior going to try to beat the buzzer. Her shot up and no good. And that is how our game will end with the Lady Mustangs from Frontier hoisting the championship plaque here in the Glencoe Invitational for the fourth year in a row with a dominant 50 the 28 win over the Glencoe Lady Panthers excellent job there by the Lady Mustangs as I don't know I have any official stats but their uh, tournament uh, win-loss score is I mean they they won every game here in this three game 
three round tournament by double digits. So uh, just a tremendous job there from the Lady Mustangs and Coach Bird as the Mustangs are playing like a well-oiled machine right now. And they will be playing Tuesday at home against Blackwell. I believe Blackwell's, are they 3A? 4A? Basketball. 4A, I do believe. Uh, so that, that playing a bigger squad like that will be a test for the Lady Mustangs. But then as we stated, you know, late next week, they will head to Chisholm over in the Enid area to play at the uh, Enid Fest the Chisholm Festival. Chisholm Festival, yes. And they will be playing a couple of uh, Class A school, a couple rank schools. I can find that information out for you all right quick. On other note with that, that Chisholm Festival, it will also be on Squirtle TV and it should be broadcast again across FrontierMustangs.tv. And then, uh, so their matchups there, as they've already been set, on the 29th at 1 o'clock, the Lady Mustangs will be taking on Visai. They're number 13 in Class A. And then the next day, they will be playing Sealing, Sealing number 3 in Class A. So a couple top 15 matchups next, next week for the Frontier Lady Mustangs. Already with one top 15 win as they beat Ripley last week there at home. That was an impressive game, too. So let's see what the Lady Mustangs can do uh, next week. Once again, I'm not sure. I don't think we'll probably be able to make that game on the for the radio, but you can catch it live here on Squirtle. Frontier. FrontierMustangs.tv. FrontierMustangs.tv. One o'clock next week. Also, well, first Blackwell Tuesday, yeah. uh, six thirty Frontier dot TV as well. Uh, once again, Frontier Mustang men get fourth. Lady Mustangs take home the uh, gold. We're gonna go ahead and wrap things up. Call it a night. I'm Ben Welch. I'm Join Charles Sanders. Thank you for joining me. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks everybody for listening. And I can't wait to call the game on Tuesday. Good night, everybody.